Hey guys, welcome to Science Class with Mr. Reynolds. Today we're going to talk about a couple really brief things, not going to take very long. Contact force and non-contact force. Contact force is any kind of a force that is applied when two things come in contact. They touch, okay? It's pretty simple. An uh, example would be playing the piano, uh, squeezing toothpaste out of the tube, pulling a chair out so you can sit down, okay? Those are contact forces. Within contact forces, there are two other kinds that we can break it down even further. We've got the weak and the strong contact force. The weak would be something like, I don't know, typing on a keyboard, okay, because you're not applying a lot of force. Uh, the strong would be, you know, like huge rocks underground that rub past each other and come in contact. And what's that going to do? It's going to cause an earthquake. So those are the weak and the strong. With non-contact force, this is when a force is applied and things do not touch. Okay, an example of this would be if you dropped a pencil or if you were a parachutist and you jumped out of the airplane. A third one would be magnets. Some magnets attract uh, ferrous materials, okay, certain metals. Uh, or if you have a magnet and a magnet, they're going to repel each other, okay. Uh, opposites attract, sames repel. So if you've got the North Pole and the North Pole, it's going to apply that force and, and move the magnet away. So they're not touching. Right? So that's contact force and non-contact forces. Okay, guys, something else we need to talk about are the strength and direction of force. Okay? So forces have both strength and direction. Think about it like this. If you have your binder on your desk and you push it, it's going to slide away from you. But if you use the same amount of force pushing down on it, nothing's going to happen. So different things happen because the force is applied in different directions. It's really important to remember that. Also, we're going to look at the arrows. Oh my gosh, the arrows. Again with the arrows. We're going to talk about this all year. We've already talked about it a lot with speed, velocity, displacement, uh, anything we were talking about, distance. So remember, the arrows are always red, okay? The, the length of the arrow shows the strength of the force. The direction that the arrow is pointing is showing the direction in which the force is being applied. So let's use a tennis racket hitting a tennis ball and a ping pong paddle hitting a ping pong ball, okay? So which way would the tennis ball be going? Probably up, right? Okay, so we're going to make an arrow like this, okay? Now with the ping pong ball, which way would the ball probably be going? You know, down, okay, that makes sense. Okay, now does this look reasonable? Should these arrows be the exact same length like this? I would say no, because we're measuring these in newtons. Okay, and a good way to think of a newton is um, if you li lift up a stick of butter, that's going to be one newton. If you lift up a two liter bottle of pop, that's going to be 20 newtons. So that means that the arrows here have to be proportional. So with the tennis racket, we're probably going to apply 300 newtons. Okay, so what does that mean with the ping pong paddle, with the arrow length? Well, I would think it should be shorter, but how much shorter? It depends on how much force we're applying. Generally speaking, with a ping pong paddle, you're going to be using 100 newtons of force. So that means that your arrow is going to have to be a third the size. So let's see. Is that looking like about a third? Yeah, I think so. Okay? So this is how we show strength and direction of force. Always going to use these red arrows. We're always going to come back to these crazy red arrows. But remember now, it's going to be the direction that the force is applied and the length of the arrow is going to tell you a lot, okay, how much force is being applied. It's kind of cool that we have these little symbols that we use in science that explain so many things. That's pretty neat. All right, well, thanks for coming and see you next time.